<laughs> Hi guys, how you are? How you doing? Yes, how you doing, Hugo? Good Thanks for calling in, mate. Um, yeah, you know, first time, first time on the show, I've sort of bit my tongue a little bit on the football last <laughs> season um, because I wanted to give it, I wanted to give it a bit of time. But now we're in the second season. I thought I'd come on and just say hello. Well, well to, to, it's about the football. Ange today said we didn't score the goals that our football deserved. Do you, do you agree with that assessment from Ange? Well, I, I think regardless of whether I agree on the assessment, I think it doesn't really make a difference um, in terms of the result. You know, it's about the result. We can sit here all day and say that we deserved more goals, but we could have said that for a lot of games last season. Um, I thought it was a pretty naive performance, a lot of intensity, but not a lot of direction and very poor in front of goal, very profligate in front of goal. Um, and then on the other end, they pop one in at the back post. And, um, you know, we talk about Romero, he's a dog. He's one of, you know, he's one of the best players at the, in the team, but he's at fault for the goal there. So, mm. um, yeah, pretty, pretty poor, pretty poor game. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at least glad that Andrew's a bit honest about, about the way the game went. And, uh, yeah, but very disappointing. So, Hugo, I get the sense that overall you think that kind of Andrew's um, very attacking style is probably more naive than likely to take us towards trophies. Is that right? Well, I just think, you know, we're, we're far too fragile. Um, we're not talking about attacking football versus pragmatic football. We're talking about a really, really ultra attacking football mm. um, to the point where, you know, we're so open. You know, I, I've been very tuned in with the sort of dialogue on, on Ange and, and the way we're playing. And, mm. um, you know, it's one thing if we're talking about, you know, we're, we're committing men forward and we're going to be a little bit open and we're going to concede some goals here and there. I can, I can accept that. Um, I could also accept it last year where, uh, not last year, in seasons prior where our defensive line, we didn't have a lot of quality in there. We were talking about Ryan Sessignon and Tanganga and Dyer and Sanchez. Those were the kind of players that were mainstays sure. in the team. And now now we've got a very, very good back line. We've got very, very good players in there. Um, and, and the goals we are just too... Apologies, guys. Sorry about that. No, uh, yeah, not sure what happened there. Um, I can't remember the point, uh, Hugo. I think your point was well. I, 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 I riffed off the back of your point, which I think is where you're going. Which I was saying I, I don't disagree with. Which I feel like what you're you're looking for is a little bit more of a compromise between the kind of all-out attack that you mentioned of Ange, and then maybe the kind of somewhere the other side, which is where you know currently, which is currently working in the Premier League actually, which is where Arteta and Pep kind of play four centre backs across the back line. But correct exactly. me if I'm wrong, mate. Exactly, and, and you know, you, you look at Arteta and, and and Pep, and you know, those 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 teams have the ability to go forward, but they're nowhere near as as, as open and, and as vulnerable as we are. And so, it's naive to, to to think that you know, with this system, we would need you know, we would need a Galacticos FC in the front six in order to be that dominant. We just aren't. Um, you know, again, I'm not talking about Conte and Mourinho football. I'm talking mm. about fundamentals of the game we're not talking i'm not talking about you know i, I can accept the fact that there's men forward we're, we're sending the fullbacks forward there's going to be a bit of space in behind but you know we're not talking about um you know a little counter attack here and there we're talking about every single game i mean we're talking about luton town last season burnley burnley last season really giving us hard games uh, towards the tail end of the season and you look this year you know it's a really really poor goal to concede we're not even in transition we're all the defenders are back mm. the ball's on the on, the, on our left hand side the only player in there is Vardy. He's the he's the goal scorer, and Romero just lets him go in behind. So, um, and so so it's just it's just it's too it's too poor. It's not you know we're not we're not conceding unlucky counter attack counter attack goals. We're conceding really just fundamentally flawed, um, you know, structural weaknesses. That's what I'm, I'm seeing. Um, so I would say like. The first, even though it's the first game of the season, I would say it's a very big concern in terms of the way the game is played out. Um, it's easy to sort of look at it from a result, black and white results perspective, and sort of take positives from that. But if you look at the way the game went out, it was pretty, it was almost worst case scenario, really, the way that game went went down. I'm not sure how many people are taking positives out of the result, but um, I understand what you're saying. But in terms of how the performance went, you know, some would argue. We could have been out of sight by that, you know, by that, um, by the time Vardy yeah. scored, we should have been three, four nil up. So, would you, could you not say, you know, if we perform like this going forward, we're going to win a lot more games than we drop points in? Well, you know, what I saw was um, 
after we scored the goal, I saw we sort of eased off the gas a little bit. It, you know, we were we were we were sort of cruising and, and playing cute football. It looked like the players were very comfortable out there. You know, players were smiling and laughing after missing quite guilt edged chances. Um, to me, we just looked so relaxed and so chill. Look how look how cute our football is. Look how nice we are. We're so much better than Leicester. Look how you know look how intricate mm. we are. And um, we had total eggs on our faces afterwards. You know, so I, I, we played well. Um, you know, but I don't think we had too many actually clear cut, clear cut chances. The ones that stick out to me are um, a couple of the corners. I think there was a goal line clearance from Ndidi there that mm -hmm. Solanke could have knocked in at the end there. There was a there was a nice one from Brennan Johnson who drilled across and unfortunately no one was there. The angle was a bit tight. But other than that, I kind of thought we huffed and puffed. We had we had a lot of the ball and we just sort of looked like if we have the ball, then Leicester can't hurt us. So let's just pass the ball around and have some nice touches. And it just didn't, you know, I just didn't really think we were that great to be honest with you and the result reflects that you know and can sit there and say that we deserved more goals but you know you get generally speaking you get the result you deserve and i, I you know we for 75 percent of the ball we just didn't really we didn't hurt leicester enough really we didn't test the goalkeeper enough really yeah. um you know i've seen you know in terms of individual performances in terms of solanke in terms of some of the other players i thought you know i thought solanke had a decent game i think first of all it's, what stands out to me is that he's a much better footballer than Richarlison in terms of Definitely. his control, in terms of his link-up play. So I'm not necessarily um, going to be knocking him down for not getting the goal. I thought he had a couple, you know, he had a couple headers. He could have, you know, done a little bit better there. But generally speaking, I think it's clear from that first game we have an upgrade in that position. Um, he obviously is going to be judged on how many goals he does get. Um, but I think for right now, you know, I give him it was a it was an okay uh, an okay performance. I would say. You know, for me, Brennan Johnson, every time I watch him start in, in the team, I see 10 players and then I see Brennan Johnson out on the right. That, it's a, it, and I'm not trying to be too unfair to him, but that's what I see. I see 10 players in, in a team and then Brennan Johnson uh, on his own because I just don't... He, he to me, today again was, was the standout uh, weak performer in the team. Yeah, so I was listening to... Um... Harry Brooks, I don't know if you follow Harry Brooks on Twitter. He's a football coach, he's really great. I was listening to him on a podcast uh, with Flav. I think it was a fighting cock earlier this week. And he was saying, you know, it would not surprise him if in a month's time, Wilson Odebear was starting over Brennan Johnson yeah. on the right because he can go both sides and he's incredibly, um, you know, he can he can go one-on-one -on -one both sides and he can run down the middle as well if needed. Um, and he will add a different dimension potentially to what Johnson could do. The thing that the thing that really surprised me today, and I said it, is for me, Johnson suits way better when he comes on later in the game and there are big spaces to run into. So it was a surprise to me. I, I actually thought he did all right in the first 15, 20 minutes, but other than that, not a lot. So it was a surprise to me that he started over Kulisevsky. Um, but yeah, no, Hugo, honestly, I don't disagree with a, a lot of what you're saying, but Ange, you know, is a successful football manager wherever he's been. And he seems to genuinely feel that this will work uh, in this kind of full attacking way. I have to say, I do fear for St James's Park in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, you know, the you last go. couple of the couple, last couple of times we've been there obviously haven't been pretty, but also, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest that we look that much better defending set pieces today. And uh, you know, if we let them get there, uh, you know, obviously we've got to deal with Everton first. But if we let them get a goal early, like we have done the last couple of times, then um, you know, <clears throat> because of all the things you've said, but also I would add to that. When we do lose the ball on transition, there is just like an enormous hole down the middle of, of mm -hmm. midfield, like where you could drive eight buses through. And uh, better, better teams better teams will destroy us there, I fear. I fear. Yeah, and I would just say sort of two points. I know I'm sort of running out of time, but I would just say two points in terms of, you, you know, you, Barnaby, you made a point about a Rodri type midfielder. Of course, everyone needs a Rodri type sure. DM in the team. And I, I would say another concern about the recruitment is that, you know, based on the, the links that I've seen ar around Tottenham, um, it doesn't seem that we're after a player like that. Um, no. It doesn't seem that we're, we're after a, 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 an anchor type a defensive midfielder that is going to really clean up um, for us. I think Ange wants someone like Basuma, who's going to play you know, some nice, going to have, you know, some nice control, going to be able to drive the ball forward. Um, you know, Basuma for me, I, I'm, I, I think uh, last season, I, I think in two years of football at Spurs, I've not seen him do much at all. He's had maybe a, a month or two of good football. Um, I'd like to see the back of Basuma. Um, 
to be honest with you. So, but I, so I don't think that DM. Well, what, what, did you th what did you think of Ben Tenkel tonight in the sixth? I thought he was excellent. I thought yeah. Ben Tenkel was excellent. I thought he had a great game. Um, uh, it's, uh, again, he's had the injuries. That, you know, he's, he, he got knocked out. You know, in 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 the, in the other opponent's box, mm. he can't seem to. You know, it, it's terrible what happened to him. Obviously, mm. I've seen that he he might be okay now, but um, I thought so he had a great game. So could he not do the job potentially? Yeah, he could. He could do the job, but it's if just he can stay fit and doesn't you know, stay it's the fit. first game back of the season. So we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, again, like I saw links that Ben Tancor was going to leave this summer. So you know, I saw Turkey links uh, at some point this summer. So I don't know. I, I, part of me feels that Ben Tancor has been shoehorned in there a little bit because of the Basuma situation. Um, but I think Ben Tancor had a great performance. It's a shame that he obviously went down with the injury. Um, you know, but um, and and the the uh, the other point I'd make. Um, around um, Angie's sort of, you know, it really depends on um, what the expectations are of the fan base. You know, um, mm. for me, I would have said that the league position is going to be compromised a little bit. I don't think top four is 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 should be on everybody's radar because we're playing in Europe and we have ambitions of going far in the cups. You know, the cup competitions last year were a total abject failure. I mean, you know, we were out of the Carabao Cup in August. You know, mm. before the you know. It was, it was terrible. So we have ambitions of going far in the Cups. We have ambitions of going far in Europe. So it's going to be a very high ask for us to improve our league position of, uh, of fifth. Also, when you consider the fact that, you know, for, if you, you know, there's that stat going around of if you take out the first 10 games of last season and you look at the Premier League table for the last 28 games of the season, you can see that we were, you know, a bottom half team. I think we were 15th or 16th or something like that in terms of if you look at after game week 10, up until game week 38, which is three quarters of the season, mm. where our league position was, um, which is a telltale of how much that first 10 games saved us. Um, mm. So that first 10 games is, is really a reflection of, you know, teams not knowing how to play us, teams not knowing what we're going to do. And then the three quarters of the season after that is teams, in my opinion, figuring us out. And um, I think a lot of the games this season are going to be like that Leicester game. We're going to be struggling to really have that cutting edge. And we're going to have a loss of the ball. It's going to look bright and it's going to look um, appealing to the eye. But are we going to get the results nine out of ten times? I, 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 I don't know. Um, Can I just ask you one more thing before you go, Hugo? Because I think yeah. you're a really good yeah. caller. Why Why did we suddenly stop putting crosses in the box in the second half when the first half it was causing them endless trouble? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it comes from a, a panic and an a, a, a ill discipline with the with the attacking football. Um, you know, what we tried to do in that second half was pass it into the net, which mm. is exactly what we tried to do. We tried to score a nice perfect goal to just cap off the, the, the night. Um, you know... You're looking at guys like Bergval and Archie Gray to come on who are 18 years old and, and you know, I'm yeah. seeing a lot of the discourse, Bergval must start, Bergval must start, Archie Gray has to start, you know, these kids have to start and it shows that the first team quality isn't, it's not there. And um, we stopped putting crosses into the box because we started, you know, overdoing it, overworking it, you know, we're, we're drawing 1-1 to Leicester who, in my opinion, this Leicester team is probably going to go down again. Um, you know, we've conceded a goal against the runner play. We've been shell shocked. We've been, you know, hit yeah. with a glass. You know, we've been our jaws have been smashed, and um, that's why we kind of we 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 just try to rush it. We try to just play nice nice football and try to just get really into the box. And um, there was that one right at the end where Solanke gets the ball in the middle of the box. He turns on his right foot and then he he's right. He's in the six. He's in. The, he's five yards from the goal and mm. then he tries to play a through ball to Son, which goes out of play. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it was right at the end, it was in the 90 something minute. And it, I was like, that sums it up. He's trying to play a pass in the six yard box when he's right in the middle of the goal. Um, yeah. So that's what I saw. I saw a bit, you know, they were anxious. They were they were in a rush to score a goal that because they knew that, you know, we were in a bad position. We had conceded a goal against the run of play. This isn't the result that we need. So it was just immaturity and naivety again. You know, those are the sort of the words that um, come to mind. Yeah, top man, Hugo. Hugo, thanks for calling in, mate. You've been a big hit with yeah. the chat. A really great call. We'll hope you call in again. And uh, we'll nice see one, you guys. very soon. All right, Appreciate have a good day. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot.